today we are looking at the frequently requested Griffin Vulture coming from the European expansion. Its teal power lets you choose any player, including yourself, and for each predator that player has on their board, you get to cash one rodent on this card. I know some of you out there are immediately thinking, this card isn't underrated, I play it all the time. But me personally, I didn't think this bird was that good. It seemed too situational. But when I do end up playing this card, I've been noticing a greater return on my investment every game. I'm moving the Griffin Vulture from lower tier to mid tier, and this video will explain why. Let's look at the obvious. It's free to play in the first column. The Vulture's counterpart is the Carrion Crow, which has the exact same teal power, but I believe the Griffin Vulture is still slightly better since he's free. I've said this over and over again, but in round one, when you don't have a ton of food, free birds are a great way to advance your board, period. The food cost of this bird is amazing, because there isn't a food cost. I've stolen a couple end of round goals on the last turn in round one for birds in your grassland or a filled column. My opponent thinks I don't have any food, so I can't play any more birds, right? Wrong. Griffin Vulture swoops in out of nowhere. You see what I did there? Secondly, the main reason I feel like this bird is underrated, the teal power comes through. In round one, if I see my opponent with just one predator, or I plan on playing at least one predator, I'm turning this one point bird into five points, bare minimum. That's a great return on investment. The Griffin Vulture teal power also has what I like to call the style of play going for it. What do I mean by that? Couple things. Even with all the expansions, the Falconer and Rodentologist bonus cards are still frequently selected. They are easier to qualify for than some of the other bonus cards. For example, I could choose the Wildlife Gardener card and play four bull nest birds for four points. Or I could select the Falconer bonus card and play just two birds for the same four points. It's just an easier qualification, leading players to pick it up, ultimately helping the Griffin Vulture's chances. More on this style of play. Let me show you a few percentages for the math people out there. As of May 2023, 13% of the entire deck are Predator cards. 58 of 446 total cards have the Skull and Crossbones. Now, are you going to see that many Predators in one game? Probably not. But of those 58 cards, 33 of them are worth 5 points or more. That's 57% and 18 of the 58 are worth 6 points or more, 31%. The point is, even though Predators represent just 13% of the deck, the majority of that 13% are higher scoring birds on top of their white or brown power, giving the player additional points. This makes me believe that players will lean towards playing them ultimately for those higher point values and giving the griffin vulture viability especially in a game with three or more players the likelihood of a cash is high many of those big point bird bombs like the golden eagle great horned owl goshawk eastern imperial eagle and benelli's eagle are held for the very end of the game giving the vulture a last minute cash all I'm saying is, in my experience, the points add up for a card with no food cost. And a bird that gives me more points than I originally expected is a bird I like to call underrated. Also, if you'd like to see a Carrion Crow versus Griffin Vulture Premier League match, I'll put a link in the description below. It's the most cashed rats I've ever had. Thank you for watching this episode. Also, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate your support. See you next time on Master Wing.